Let me feed you. Adam and Corwin are playing games. They're both so stupid and lame. The show is going to hell. In a handbasket. Hey everyone, I'm Corwin. This is Adam. You're watching Handbasket Gaming. And I am holding a controller at you. And I'm playing. Does Corwin remember the name of this game? It's called Super Hot. Hey, he did it! That's how they described me uh, at work regularly. Sure. That's not true. So yeah, he uh, he controls time. Corwin is the Time Lord. And we're uh, he convinced me to do another one of these. Uh, but I'm dead. So I've got... No, actually, you're fine? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Right then. It's dragon. So I finally, I have, I have done away with pretense here and decided to, wow, you managed to kill a guy like without killing the guy. Okay. There's, there's more, more guys, more guys, more guns. Uh, I, I keep, I, I always take notes of things that I think of like during the week where it's just like, oh, that's a funny story or, oh, that's something interesting to talk about. And then we get into the show, and I completely blank on what it is, and I feel weird having my phone out during the show, but fuck it. I've got stories and shit. So, okay. I had a dream. Oh, I like dreams. Tell me about your dream, Adam. You're not going to like this one, because it oh. paints you in a very bad light. Oh, good. Let's put that on the internet. Let's... So, in this dream, uh, we're hanging out. It's me, uh, me and my wife, Corwin and his wife. We're hanging out. And I start to feel weird. And it becomes... There's another guy behind you. Oh, no, you got him. Okay. Uh, it becomes clear in the way that things become clear in dreams that really wouldn't be all that obvious. Like, it wouldn't be easy to determine that this is what's going on. But it became clear to me in this dream that I had been dosed with meth and Corwin was the one that did it. And then, while Jen and I were on meth that was administered to us against our will, your uh, your gun got shot. And yeah. then you got shot in your kneecap. I had that coming. Okay. Um, but yeah, while I was under this, the effect of this meth... And uh, Jen was under the effect of this meth that was uh, was administered to us by uh, by I'm gonna say Corwin. I'm gonna say just Corwin for the sake of uh, of protecting even Dreamcat from this allegation. I uh, and here's where it takes an interesting turn because at this point, like it was not it was not forceful by any means. But Corwin started trying to convince all of us to have an orgy. And it got weird. Because we were on meth, and, like, we weren't down for it, but we were, like, freaking out. Well, I'll be honest. If we were going to have an orgy, it would not be with on our meth wives. time or with our wives. Oh, okay. It would be with Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore. And, and Tigger too? <laughs> Did I fucking say Tigger? Did but I say Tigger, Adam? He bounce, he's so bouncy. On um, my dick. <laughs> Bitch. Okay, you're, stop. You're going to run into the TV. Well, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to. Just duck. You're some you're in front of your cover now, which is not the best place to be. Oh my god. I tell one dream story and you just get all higgledy piggledy. No, don't okay. Once you get once you get done with this section. Okay, you never tell mind. Your dream. Right. I like your dream so you've, far. You've kind of No, that was it. Like that was the end of the dream. Is that I we we declined your uh your generous offer of orgy. And, uh, and then I woke up. Like, it's not a particularly interesting dream. It's just something that exists and I wanted to inflict on everyone else. On a similar note. You want to inflict meth on everybody else? I woke up in a cold sweat one morning, realizing that Limp Biscuit rhymed right here with right here. Just think about that for a second. 
That is fucked up. It's like, I know y'all be loving this shit right here. L-I-M-P. Biscuit is where? Where are they? They're right here. And that was his lyricism. That's what Fred Durst do. He wrote that. He, he wrote that I'm down somewhere. I'm not convinced somewhere. he wrote anything. Well, no, I'm, I'm certain he did because that was his best. And and that's what we got. Oh. Uh, the old spray and pray and die. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. What you I'm got? Gonna, I'm gonna tell you. Damn it, I forgot to start the timer. See, this is why I should just play the games. Because I'm not good at I'm not good at the other stuff. Um Well, that's I'm not very good at this stuff either. Fucking hell. Um So we were on uh we were coming back from Texas. You I had when to, you went to your Texas I had trip job for work? training uh that I had to do down in Texas. And I brought Jen with me because that it essentially amounts to a cheap vacation because, you know, my company pays for uh, the hotel and my uh, plane ticket. And then all I have to pay for is Jen's plane ticket and Jen's food. So, you know, easy, easy vacation, easy, cheap vacation. And I like it. Um, I was a little bit jealous because I thought that sounded like a fun time. It's I mean, it's Texas. Uh, <laughs> so there's a limit as to how good it can be. Out of bullets. Oh my god, he did it. Okay, all right, stop. Stop Done. where you are. Not moving. Rotate to your right, 90 degree. There you go. Okay, he's back on camera and he's yeah, not. Everybody. You really, you, you were within like inches of the television. It was terrifying. Uh, any butt. He wasn't stroke me off. What's up, bro? Anyway, so we're on our way back from. Bye bye. Uh, on our way back from Texas, and we're on the flight, and I'm not gonna go, like, it's one of those things where this is, uh, Jim Jeffries put it very well when he described this, uh, but I have various problems with how people conduct themselves in airports and on planes. Uh, his whole bit is about armrests. And, you know, who owns what armrest? That's fair. I felt that there weren't enough armrests in airports in general. No, no, I mean on the plane. So, you've got a row of three seats. The person on the window seat has the window. So they sacrifice one armrest. That's just, that's just law. Like, that, that should be the law at this point. Nice, you blocked a bullet with your gun without even looking at it. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Anyway. Call me Johnny uh, Rick. So, and then the person on the aisle has the option of sort of like putting their leg out into the aisle and stretching a bit more than anybody else. That's my leg. Hi, how you doing? How are you doing? Um, so they sacrifice an armrest. The only thing the middle seat gets is two armrests. That's how balance exists in the universe. And that's how so society continues to function. And people don't get that, and it's the worst. So that's one. Number two is people lining up before it's their turn. When you're boarding by group number. That's true. Just stay sit. Like, you're not going to get in any faster, and fuck you for trying. Like, do you think no one else thinks to get up sooner? Like, do you think you're, you're just outsmarting the system or any... Dumb shit like that. I will say, that's something Adam, whoa, he's got a shoddy. He does. And a body. But not anymore. That's one thing Adam taught me. Not that I was jumping to get in line necessarily, but I hadn't really done planes. Adam's like, all right, man, lesson number one. I just told, I'm just like, you're not a monster. So you don't stand up. That yet. is word for word what he said to me. He told yep. me I wasn't a monster. And it was the first time anyone ever told me that. Yep. I don't think you actually shot that guy up there. Oh, he's dead. Oh, okay. Cool. This guy, I'm worried. So, okay, so those are pet peeves. Whoa! Those, those are so things real. that kind of bug me. Where did I put that fucking timer? There it is. Uh, those are things that kind of bug me. The thing that happened to Jen was so far beyond the pale that I cannot even fathom how this person exists. So, this woman behind Jen was grabbing the back, the headrest, 
of Jen's seat. Like, both hands gripping over to the front of the headrest. The headrest of the seat that I paid for, for my wife to use on this flight. Gripping with both hands. And on those hands, like it extended out because she was sitting fully back on her seat, gripping the headrest. That's ridiculous. And on her elbows, she had balanced her fucking iPad. Lady, if you ever see some, okay. If ever we were to have a video go viral out on the internet and have people see it, have it be this one, have it be this section. I don't care, R illegally rip it off YouTube and just take this section. Fuck it, make it just the audio. Do it as a podcast. Communi- Disperse this. When someone pays for a plane seat, you don't get to touch it. That's not your seat. He's not wrong. It's not your seat, lady. You're a monster. You deserve you to be You're a hit. subhuman beast who does not deserve to fly the friendly skies. You deserve only hostile skies for the rest of your miserable life. And on the next episode, we'll play something else. Yeah, we will. Uh, let's see. Uh, our advice for uh, for this episode is support your local animal shelter. Fuck uh, yeah, you should. They, they uh, you know, they're not a puppy mill. They're not uh, contributing to negative welfare for animals. And they... Uh, they help rescue and enrich the lives of pets. And speaking of, if you're going to get a pet, rescue an animal. Don't Always buy from do. a pet store. Rescue an animal. It's a Always good idea. Do. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.